Some called him the best player in baseball in 1946, even though he was not allowed to play in the major leagues. Many thought he was the logical choice to integrate the game in 1947, but Jackie Robinson broke that barrier. For Monty Irvin, however, history was still calling, and once he reached the majors at age 30, Irvin made up for lost Later. time. Signed by the New York Giants prior to the 1949 season, Irvin was a regular in the big leagues by 1950 and won the Giants' starting left fielder's job in 1951. That summer, Irvin led the Giants in their improbable pennant comeback against the Dodgers. Irvin drove in a National League best 121 runs that year as New York captured the NL flag following the famous three-game playoff that ended with Bobby Thompson's home run. In eight big league seasons with the Giants and Cubs, Irvin batted 293 and posted a 383 on base percentage. Irvin was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1973 by the Committee on Negro Baseball Leagues and worked for the Commissioner's Office for four decades following his retirement. Hi everyone, this is John, Silver Food Cardboard. Uh, back to do another video. I wanted to share my uh, kind of a Monty Irvin story and my collection so far of his baseball cards. So if you guys have watched some of my earlier videos, um, I talked about working at a card shop in the mid to late 80s and I was fortunate enough to actually meet Monty Irvin and he came in, he signed a lot of our cards, baseballs, and what a really nice guy but what was interesting when the owner of the shop told me that we're, he was going to have a Hall of Famer come into the shop and sign some, you know, balls and cards and stuff like that, I thought it was Ted Williams. So I lived in Florida. Uh, Ted Williams had just moved to our area at that time, and I was so excited that I was going to meet Ted Williams. Well, it was Monty Irvin. I had no idea who Monty Irvin was. Uh, yes, he was a Hall of Famer, but I didn't know th the significance of his career, um, the influence he had on Willie Mays, and what a really great person he was. So my very first interaction with Monty Irvin was to ask him, now remember, this is 87, 88, somewhere around that time frame, um, have you met uh, Daryl Strawberry, have you met Doc Gooden, have you met Don Mattingly? And he was gracious enough to say, yes, I've met them all, and I really didn't know his, his backstory. So when I got back into collecting cards, I wanted to make it a point to go ahead and collect his series. And what's really nice about collecting Monty Irvin is he played in the 50s. He played a short time in the league. He is a Hall of Famer. Um, but it's a very good example of the cards that you can actually collect in the 50s, the golden age of baseball card collecting, because there were so many cards out there uh, available to kids, you know, after World War II. So if you were a 10-year-old kid in 1955, wow, there was a lot of choices out there. So let's go ahead and get to the cards. And I'm going to start off with the newest card to the oldest that I have. Um, so his last card in the league was a 1956 Tops, Beautiful looking card and a PSA 7. And this is when he was playing with the Cubs. So he played uh, the rest of his career with the Giants and his last season with the Chicago Cubs. So we'll take a look at the front and back there. And moving on, we have the 1955 Tops. So, just like what Tops did in that time frame, they reused his picture there on the right hand side. But this is a good example of the 55 Tops Monty Irvin in a PSA 6. Monford Merrill Irvin. So, moving on. Um, I've been actually getting a lot of cards from either private collectors or um, Greg Morris cards and I've been getting some raw cards. So this is a 1954 Topps Monty Irvin 
What a beautiful looking example of the 54 tops. Love the mid 50s tops cards. And then we'll take a look at the back of that. So this is from a private collector that had a set break. And it was really hard to find a graded card that I actually liked and felt that was a fa fair value. So I ended up getting this card, which I believe is, looks great. So moving on is going to be um, a, a different kind of issue here. And this was the uh, 1954 New York Journal American. It was a newspaper in New York City. So remember, he played the majority of his career in New York City. And this set was issued by the now extinct New York American Journal paper. And it featured the Giants, Yankees, and Dodgers. It was a 59 card set. Uh, some of the key cards in this were the Mantle, Maze, and Jackie Robinson. So pretty interesting. On the back there, it's got the dates for the home games there for 1954. So this is where I can really vary the collection with Monty Irvin and I'm still getting a Hall of Famer. Next card here is a SGC. This is a 1955 Topps doubleheader. This is Irvin and Hammer, <laughs> uh, unperforated. So this card you could actually fold and the legs were acting as the second person on the card, which is Russ there. And then it's got some of the stats on the back. So interesting enough, this was actually kind of a throwback to the 1911 T201 Mecca uh, double folders. So interesting kind of collection here of uh, the 55 top double headers. Some of the key cards in this set were the Ted Williams, Hank Aaron, and Jackie Robinson. Um, something else that I, I actually kind of looking up the history of this particular card, if you actually place the other cards within this set side by side, uh, the background forms a continuous stadium scene. So I didn't notice that until I actually um, did a little research on this set here. So pretty cool. So 1955 Topps double header. Uh, next up is the Red Man Tobacco. So this series here was issued. This is a 1954 Red Man Tobacco. Monty Irvin. All right. And then that was issued 1952 to 1955. This set. Uh, Irvin is in the 52 and 54, the 54 that I'm showing here. The 52 is more rare and about two and a half times the price of this one here. What I find really interesting is, you know, it's got the tab along the bottom there still. And if I was a, a kid or, you know, my father that would pick this up in his, uh, in his tobacco, that would have been long gone. So pretty interesting little set here, the 1954 Redman Tobacco, Monty Irvin. So the next card here is the 1954 Stallmeyer Franks. So probably one of the, his most rare cards. And I wanted you to take a look. This is actually an autograph card too. So when I was working at the card shop, um, I never liked on-card autographs. So when Monty would come in, I would go ahead and our, our owner asked me to collect and uh, put aside all the Monty Irvin baseball cards so he could come in and sign them. And he signed a ton in the late 80s and early 90s. Well, I didn't like it, so I would I would pull a few aside. A lot of the postcards and a lot of the pictures I would pull aside, and uh, I would hide the rest of the cards because I didn't want them autographing them. Um, I don't believe that this was ever one that was in our card shop in Florida, but I think it's pretty interesting because this is very, very rare. Um, this 
there was only eight of this particular card graded, but this is the only one that has the autograph. So that's the Stallmeyer Franks. And we'll show the back of that. So pretty rare card, pretty cool. And for someone that doesn't really care for the on-card autograph, uh, I'm really glad to have this particular card. So next up is the exhibits cards. So the first one I'm gonna show you is the US version here. I think I showed it in another video. And um, inexpensive, I think I paid $10 for this card. So it's, you know, just a basic, simple card. Um, this one here was from either the 51 to 53 exhibit series. A good reference for the exhibits cards is Keyman Collectibles, because what they can do is they can actually go in there and tell you a little bit about the card itself and then taking a look at you know down there each card that was issued between 47 and 1966 uh, they can tell you actually when that was issued so a neat little series that's the US version and then this one here which is about six times the price I think I paid about sixty dollars for this one this is the Canadian exhibits so a little bit more rare that's got more of a red tint to it. So moving on, we're into the 1953 tops. And this is funny. This is actually um, two cards that I've got. And I paid the same price for both of them. And that's kind of a rookie mistake when I first got back into collecting. Um, I picked up the four on the left-hand side without really too much research. And then I ended up picking up the five for the same amount of money just a few, maybe a month later or so, but love the 53 tops. Next up here is the 53 Bowman Color. I absolutely love this set. This is a PSA 7. What a beautiful picture here of Monty Irvin. And then on the back here, you've got the stats. So, um, I really love uh, watching Bowman 53 Alex's videos. He, if you haven't seen his channel, uh, go to Bowman 53. He's doing the complete run of the 53 Bowman color set, and he does an outstanding job on his video and video production. So 53 Bowman color. Next up, this was another. This is a hard one to find. Um, really poor centering. Um, poor registration on a lot of these cards and I looked and looked and looked and finally found this one here um, relatively inexpensive and I felt that this was about the best example of this card that I could find here in a, a BBG 2.5 so that's the 52 tops Monty Irvin we'll take a look at the back there all right Moving on, this is a set that a lot of people really don't care for, but for some reason I like it, and I like it probably because of its imperfections, but this is the 1952 Burke Ross, and look at that. It is miscut. It's just out of focus. It, it's just a rough looking card, um, and that's what you find in this series here. If you were to go on eBay right now to try to take a look and find a Monty Irvin from the 52 Burke Roths, they're beat up. So this is about the best example that I could find. Um, I think this was another Greg Morris card pickup here. So Hip Parade of Champions, 52 Burke Ross. All right, getting down to some of his earlier cards here. This is the 52 Bowman. Monty Irvin, beautiful little checkered background with that netting, and the back of the 52 Bowman. So I know for a fact that not exactly this particular card, but a card like this back in the late 80s, I hid from Monty at the card shop so he wouldn't sign it because I really didn't like on-card autographs, but I didn't like the facsimile autograph and an on-card autograph. 
So, and and I enjoy watching everyone's uh, auto collections and everything like that. It's just not something for me. I think I'd rather have an auto on a baseball or a bat. So, cool example of the 52 Bowman Monty Irvin. All right, moving on. So, I looked a lot for this particular card, and I actually found this in the connected version of the 51 tops red back so pretty cool so that's got dick cocos and monty irvin on there as a kid if i was to get this particular card obviously this is part of a game set here there would be no way that they would still be attached so for this card to last this long since 1951 I really find it amazing and also this was part of uh, you know his his rookie year or rookie year card I should say um, two versions of these cards here were the um, the red backs and the blue backs I guess in the 80s they actually found a stash of the red backs so these are actually a little bit more common um, but Monty was just on the the red back version of this card so pretty neat and showing that varied type of collection that you can have with players from the 1950s especially if they played in New York City uh, they were issued on almost every different um, card back in the day and finally wrapping it up we'll take a look at Monty Irvin and this is his rookie card this is a 1951 Bowman beautiful card you know, off center, left to right, top to bottom. But the registration on this card is beautiful. And I could not find a good example in my price point that was graded. So I ended up getting this. This was also a Greg Morris card pickup here. And just a beautiful example of the 51 Bowman Monty Irvin. So let me go ahead and I'll do a lineup of all these cards so we can see them all together. All right, let's take a look at my Monty Irvin baseball card collection one last time. Here is the complete lineup. All right. Well, I appreciate everyone watching my videos. Uh, love to read your comments and look forward to doing this again. Have a great day. Thanks.